What up, guys? Hey, what's up, guys? Give me just one moment here. Oh, I already invited. Hey, Corey, what's going on, buddy? But I know a lot of you are probably wondering this, like, why... Or, like, what's going on and stuff like that. Well, there's a huge reason as to why I did what I just did, which is blocked Eric Scruggolo for the final time, period. And that is because I wound up leaving the record label Kill the Clown Sounds a while ago to pursue my music career as a solo artist. Well, a few years ago, I met this kid named Ian Duxworth. You know, really great kid. He actually ultimately became not only, you know, family to me, but, you know, we have started up our own record label, which we are working on from the ground up. Well, there's a reason why I bought Eric Trouble, and it has to do with that. Because, see, the original name for the label that me and Ian were going to be doing is was called Last Life Records. Well, me and Eric talked about doing it, but it never went into effect. We never changed the name. Well, he messaged me literally just a little bit ago bitching at me about the name and about why I left and da-da-da. So I finally said, you know what? Fuck it, dude. Like, you know, I was trying to be on good terms with you. I was trying to do what's right. And, you know, like, he just straight up flipped out. And don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not bashing on him. I'm not doing that at all, Johnny. So don't take it that way. But... You know, him flipping out like that, it was, you know, he didn't need to be doing that. Like, he was just literally like, what's this shit? Like, what's going on? And, you know, I could have sat there and explained it to him, like, this is what's going on. But I know in the long run, he would have flipped out. Like, he would have fucking told me, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. No, I don't need to do this, and I don't need to do that type of shit. And the reason why, you know, the reason why I left Killer Clown Sounds is not just because of that, but there was a lot of drama going on that people don't really know about. Like, there was a lot of volatile, you know, issues amongst the artists and... You know, just people in general just doing childish, screwed up shit. Like, it was really messed up. <clears throat> like, I had people on the label that were stealing from me and stealing my tracks and claiming my shit and doing this and doing that. And so, really, I had no choice but to leave. It wasn't because I wanted to because I really didn't. But at the same time, what choice did I have? I had to protect myself 
as an artist and as a person before I could look after anyone else. And, you know, like, and he, I'll admit he's straight up, you know, I'll admit, when we put out Virus that night, turned out to be a great, great album. I was very proud of what Virus became, what it did, you know, and all that stuff. Like, I'm proud of that album. That was, like, my first huge successful underground album with anybody. It was a lot of fun to do and stuff like that, but... At the same time, as an artist, I kind of need to grow from that. And that's what Eric doesn't understand, is that he's stuck in the past. I know you guys might think he's all cool and everything, and I'll admit, in a lot of ways, he is. I will admit. But at the same time, mentality-wise, he's not there. He's always pulling childish bullshit. And I've, I'm telling you because I have viewed this for myself. I have witnessed this firsthand myself. He is not only pulling childish games on people and screwing with people and their emotions and all that stuff, but he acts like everybody needs to do music for free for the rest of their life. When I'm out to make a living off of my music, okay? Like, and that's a huge reason as to why I left as well is because, you know, he wanted me to do shit for free for the rest of my life. But it's like, dude, I'm a music artist. This is my livelihood. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I need to be thinking about that. Like, you know, the stuff he had me doing was like, what in the fuck? Like, you know, like, other than... You know, selling Virus as an album and, you know, putting out my own dubstep album, Cybertronica, back in the day, which is really the only album I sold for that time period. You know, I wasn't making any money. Like, he wasn't paying his artists like he said he was going to do. He was not paying us. And there were several artists on the label. Because for those of you that know about Killer Clown Sounds and know what, who all was on the label back in the day, you had myself, you had him, you had Guard Dog, um, you had Slice Killer Clown, which he actually got removed from the label because he was pulling crap saying that, you know, my name's in the label, so I should own part of the name. Like, my name is in the label of Slice Killer Clown, so I should have rights to the name. No, it doesn't work like that. And like I said, I don't hold anything personal really against anybody other than Eric. He really did lie to my face. You know, he sat there and told me from day one that when we get the money together, that he would pay me. And that was way back in 2011 when Killer Clown Sounds first started out. Dude, it's 2017. That was like 10 years ago. And we've got over, well, the label itself had over 1,000 fans. 1,000 freaking fans. 10, 000, or 1,000 plus fans on the fan page alone. Have I ever gotten paid? No. Has he ever hit me up for doing another record? No. And I've, I've sent him stuff many, 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 many times. Like, I've got emails dated back to freaking up to literally last month from when I've been sending him stuff over time. Has he ever used it? No. Has he ever used any of the vocal work that I've sent him? No. So, you know, I really had no choice but to leave. You know, I had no choice but to leave the label and go on my own for a while until literally just yesterday, actually last night, me and my good buddy Ian Ducksworth, you know, we did start up our own label. We are starting up from the ground up. Like, we're literally starting up the label from the ground up. Granted, I know on the thing 
it says Last Life Records, but we did decide on a better name, which is Bloodshot Records. Uh, we are working on our first album right now. It's literally going to be our first ever concept album, like, ever. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. We don't have much up yet to be able to present, but that will happen over time. Hey, what's up, Devin? But for those of you wondering, you know, like, I'm not mad at, you know, Eric, like, in the sense that I don't like him or can't stand him. But business-wise, he has a very bad business ethic. He doesn't have a habit of recording every day. He doesn't have a habit of promoting every day. He doesn't have a habit of, you know, putting everything he has into what he does every day. He's always worried about drinking, doing this, doing that, da da da. It's like, dude, in order to make it, you gotta give it 110%. Because let me tell you guys something, even though I might not look it right now, like, even though you guys can't see it, like, I literally every day, I put music first before everything. I literally, like, even when I'm not working on music, I'm always working ideas in my head for that next day. There will be nights where I sleep maybe three, four hours, and then I'm just, bam, right up, back at it. Let's do this. And that's how Ian is. He has that same mentality. But Eric, he doesn't have it. Ian has business ethic. This kid's only 15. Ian's only 15, and he has a better business ethic than Eric ever could. He has a sense of what to do, how to market things, how things work. He has connections to people that will actually check this, check our stuff out and, you know, listen to it. Like, he knows how to push stuff the correct way. Eric, however, does not. And Eric's almost 30. And honestly, I'm honestly tired of the drama out of him. That's all it's ever been with Eric is nothing but drama. Am I a sellout? Some of you might say yes, some of you might say no. But in my opinion, in my personal opinion, as an artist and as a person, I'm not a sellout. I'm only doing what's right for me and looking out for myself. Not only as an artist, but as a person. Like, I'm not going to sit there and speak bad on Eric entire, entirely. Because, you know, as a friend, you know, and stuff like that, he's a great friend. He's there for people. But business-wise, honestly, I really, really hate to say this, but he really is bad for business. He really is. Like, granted, he's a nice guy. Don't get me wrong. But business-wise, he doesn't have... The business mentality. He doesn't have what it takes to market his stuff and to clear out the drama the correct way. And it's sad because he's got a lot of talent. I will give him that. The dude's a talent. He's one of the most talented artists I've ever met in my entire life. And I was very proud to be able to say, hey, I know this guy. I worked with him. But he's letting that talent go to his head. Like, he thinks that, oh, I'm the best. You know, nobody can be better than me. Nobody can do this and that and da 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 Like, I own everything. I own it all. When that's the wrong kind of mentality to have. Do I see myself as the best artist in the world? No, I don't. I know there's other artists out there that are just as good as I am. But I don't sit there and criticize them on it either. I mean, if I hear some of their stuff that, I'll, that I can connect to on a personal level or that I like, I'll message them and be like, yo, that was great. That was, that was dope. I like it. That was awesome. You know, keep it up. And even if they're not that good, you know, even if they're really not that skilled, but the potential is there, I'll straight out tell the person, hey, you know, you do have potential, it is there. You just gotta work on it. Find your sound. Find what 
push you to do the music style that you're doing. Find that sound that suits you. Find what kind of music you really like and make it suit your sound. Whereas for Eric, he tries to pull people down and be like, oh, dude, you suck. Like, this isn't as good as my stuff. This isn't up to par. This isn't, you know, up to my standards. And there's been a lot of very talented people that have tried to come onto the label that he's just straight up turned away. And, you know, and it, it sucks because, you know, there's a lot of those people that are talented that he turned away. I actually knew them personally on a personal level I actually knew one of them from high school you know very great guy really hard really hard worker the dude had loads of skill but Eric just straight up said because of one incident you know he had to go and it's like dude that really wasn't fair to him and it was also kind of a slap in the face to me because I was the dude that brought him on I showed this guy to Eric and at first he brought him on and then turned around You know, Eric turned around and said, no, this dude's, you know, no good. And, you know, and I try not, and that's Eric's problem. He mixes business with personal life. I don't do that. I keep my business, I keep my music career and my personal life separate. The only time I bring them together is if, like, I'm talking to, like, my significant other or something like that. Then I'll bring it up every once in a while. But I never mix the two on that level out in public. Like, in the public eye, I never mix business with personal life, ever. Like, unless, like, I'm doing, like, a song that's inspired by... You know, stuff that I've gone through or stuff that I know what it's about or what it's like to be in those positions, then I'll bring it in in that aspect for a song. I won't sit there and bring it in full on like that. No, like, there's a song that I recorded last night, actually, that I have not put out yet, which I do plan on doing within the next few hours. You know, I wrote a song about somebody who's going through a hard time who, you know, always thinks about suicide and me knowing what that's like, I wrote upon that. I wrote that song for them to say, hey, you know, I know what it's like. You have somebody here. But when it comes to mixing personal drama with business, That's not a good thing. And that's one thing that Eric has a bad habit of doing. Is it always his fault? No, sometimes shit just happens. But he doesn't know how to leave it alone. He always has to drag it on. He always has to make a diss song about certain stuff. When me, I don't do stuff like that. I mean, if I do put a diss out on somebody, like if I do do a diss track on somebody, it's because it's usually because they pushed me to that point, but I try not to. Because doing a diss track only brings drama, hate, and it brings negativity. And I try not to bring those three things to the table. Those three things I try to keep out. I try to write songs to help people. I try to write songs and speak upon stuff that I've been through, through, you know, being mentally abused by my exes and, you know, being picked on and bullied in high school to going through, you know, suicide and depression. I write upon those things. Eric writes upon drama. He writes upon and feeds upon the drama that everybody else and himself brings to the table. And, you know, and because of that, you know, I did leave Killer Clown Sounds a few years ago because of that. And he just will not accept the fact that, you know, I want nothing more to do with the label. It's nothing 
you know, personal towards the level, but it is everything personal towards him because of how he is, what he does, how he acts. You know, I'm not going to sit there and, you know, say that he's a bad guy because a lot of the times he's not. But business-wise, he needs to grow up. He needs to learn to separate his personal life from his business life out in public. Like, if you guys notice, I mean, yeah, like today I posted that I was pissed, but that was more or less for, you know, my friends and stuff like that to see. That wasn't meant music-wise. You know, music-wise, you guys don't see any drama out of me. But you go to his page, there's like a whole freaking, I can write a book practically on all the drama that's on his page. Plus, he's constantly disappearing, coming back, disappearing, coming back on the Facebook. When it's like, if you want to truly make it and be successful, you got to be on that shit 24-7. Like, you can't just sit there and, you know, one minute start writing, you know, songs for an album. And then sit there and say, oh, because of this depression, I'm leaving Facebook for a while. No, you don't do that, dude. Like, if you're going to put out an album, stick to it. Like, with myself, I am actually bringing back a couple old albums that I never got to release when I first started out. One of them being called Enter the Shadows. I am bringing that back as an album. I am working on that. And then my other album I'm bringing back, which I'm literally in the production of right now, is called Mentally Unstable, which talks about my past. It talks about, you know, serious incidences and serious issues that I've gone through in my life. Like everything from being judged, mentally abused by my exes, you know, being walked on, being treated like shit by people in the past, as well as stuff like, you know, the death of my brother Zach, Back in 2015, the death of my older brother, Bill, earlier that year in 2015. And more recently, me finding out about one of my childhood best friends passing away. So, you know, I do, you know, have stuff that I am writing on for that album. Am I happy about what it's doing so far? Hell yeah. I love where it's going. But Eric, he always talks about killing, murder. You know, there's more to life than just killing and murdering somebody, dude. Like, see, in his mind, he's killing demons. He's talking about killing the shit that's inside to him. But to anybody else out there, they're not going to see it like that. They're going to be like, oh, this guy's talking about murder and drugs and guts and blood all the time. He's stuck in that horrorcore phase. Which, and I'm not going to say that horrorcore is dead because it's not. It's still very much alive. But dude, there's more to the underground. There's more to life than just horrorcore and blood and guts and killing somebody. There's a lot more to it. And I honestly feel he doesn't understand that. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that go through... A lot more than any of us could ever imagine. Like, there's people that, you know, even for Christmas, that aren't going to get to see their families. There's people fighting overseas right now as we speak that, you know, are not going to come home to be able to see their family for Christmas. So there's a lot more to it than he realizes. And I try to speak for those people that don't have a voice. I try to be that voice for the people like myself who are special needs, who need that voice. But Eric, he's over here talking about blood and guts and murder, and I'm over here trying to fucking save someone's life. See, I don't do music just to do it. I do it to put out a good message. I do it to help that kid 
that doesn't have anything. I do it for that kid that doesn't have a voice of their own. I do it for the people that get picked on and bullied every day. Exactly. You're completely right, Devin. You really are. There are a lot of people that can't afford it. Which, granted, yes, being around friends and family is the main thing. Like, that is very important, being around friends and family. And, you know, those are the people that I do the music for. I do it for those people that don't have anything. Because I know what it's like to not have anything. Because let me show you guys something. Most people think that a lot of my stuff that I do is in some huge studio and this and that. No. All I have is this. And Soundtrap.com. That's all I have. Plus LoopLabs.com. Which is where I make all my music. You know, I don't have a fancy production team like a lot of these high-end labels do. No. All I have is this cheap little Konami USB microphone. As you guys see, it says Konami across the thing right there. I have this and my skills with making music. That's all I have. But I make it work. I use what I have at my disposal. Am I grateful for the things I have? More than you guys can imagine. I really and truly am. But, you know, Eric does not realize that there's a lot more to life than, you know, the stuff he talks about. Granted, I don't mind horrorcore. I mean, you know, I'll sit down and I'll listen to guys like Boondocks and ABK and Blaze Your Dead Homie and Twisted on any given day. Along with guys like Kid Crusher. I'm a very huge fan of Kid Crusher. I will listen to Mars. So I do listen to a lot of underground stuff. Like, I'm not going to completely bash on horrorcore, but business-wise... You know, I feel like Eric isn't there yet. And I'm younger than he is. And I'm always thinking about music 24-7. I'm always pushing myself to do something different. I'm always pushing myself to do something different musically to push the envelope even further than what I have already. Because if you guys look me up on Star Maker, I have people telling me that I rival... You know, as far as melodic screen vocals go, I have people on there telling me that I rival guys like my good buddy Mitch Lucker from Suicide Silence. And even guys like, I had one guy that told me I rival Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. And that's a huge deal to me. To be compared to those two artists who were the best in the business for their genres, like that's a very big deal to me. So for somebody like Eric to be compared to me, there's no way he can compare to what I do. He doesn't have the business mentality. Business-wise, he cannot touch what I can do business-wise. He doesn't have the mind of a business person. He has the mind of somebody who's very, very messed up in the head. Granted, yes, music helps him you know, get through that. I get that and because I use it as a tool to help myself as well. I use it to escape a lot of stuff myself. I use it to talk about what I'm going through. But for him, he uses it like as a way to bounce around and use people and that's not okay. He uses his fame as a way to screw with people. I do not. I use my music to help people. 
I use it to save those lives that need saved. I use it to help that one kid that is going through something at home or at school. I use it to help people. I don't use it to talk about murder and killing somebody. Yes, back in the day when I very first started out, I did. But not anymore. I grew from that. I learned that, hey, you know, horrorcore isn't the only genre I'm good at. You know, and that's when I started expanding my styles. I started expanding what I talk about. And that's when I learned, hey, I can talk about these issues. I can help people who are going through the same issues that I am through my music. And that's when I started, you know, putting more and more stuff together. Like with my song, um, The Day I Lost You, which was dedicated to my brother, Zach. If you guys don't know, I can send you guys the link if you guys want to hear it. Um, you know, it is on YouTube. I did record a music video for it, which I'm very proud of how the music video turned out. I really am, like 100%. But, like, I talked about how I felt, you know, that day that I found out that he had been killed. And, you know, what I feel inside and how things have been since he's been gone since that day. You know, I talk about real issues. All Eric talks about is killing people. That's all he talks about. And, and I'll admit, there's nothing really wrong with that. There's really not. But, dude, broaden your horizons, man. Talk about other stuff. Like, talk about the soldier that isn't coming home for Christmas. Talk about that soldier that died saving his whole entire team in a firefight. Talk about that one person that did something to help someone else. Talk about that one person that needs somebody there for them. Like, I'm not going to bash on Eric entirely. I'm really not, because he is a good person. His intentions are good. I'll give him that. But talk about something other than blood and guts and murder all the time. And that's another reason why I left is because that same thing just it got boring over time like you know talk about something else and stop throwing murder and guts and blood and gore and talking about how you're gonna blow someone's brains out every two seconds like I will admit it was fun to do that I'll admit because you know there are certain people I do like to rip that I would that I seriously would love to rip up on the mic because of what they have done to me personally, on that personal level. But after a while, it kind of gets boring. You know, going back to that same genre and that same thing over and over and over. Like, it, it gets repetitive. It really does get repetitive and annoying. Doing that same style over and over again. And talking about the same thing every freaking album. Which is what we did. We talked about just basically blood, guts, and murder every fucking album. And I'll admit, doing an album about that, that was fun. I enjoyed it. It allowed me to release some of my, you know, inner dark style stuff that I've been wanting to touch on, which I was able to. But now that I'm older, and now that I'm really taking this seriously and working with my buddy Ian to bring up Bloodshot Records in a very big way, you know, with him helping me out and me helping him out, we have a mutual partnership. We're always on the same page. With Eric, I never knew what page we were on because he was either doing one thing one minute and then he would turn around and do another thing the next. It was never one right after the other. It was never a solid plan. 
Like, we could be working on an album right now. Like, let me, all right, let me rephrase that. Me and Ian could sit down, work on an album right now, and we would know exactly what to do. We could have that album done within a couple hours like that. Because we would know, hey, you know, send me this. Let's record this. Let's put this out. Whereas, and we would have that album done. Whereas for Eric, we could be two, three songs in, and then he'd be like, oh, no, I want to make the album about this now. And now we completely throw everything off. And so that's a very big deal as to why I left Killer Clown Sounds back in 2013, because of that. And that's why myself and Ian are starting up our own record label, not only because, you know, it's something that we can both say, hey, we're signed, but also it'll give us a chance to help those artists that do deserve a chance, that do deserve that one shot to actually make their dreams happen in the music world. Because I know a lot of people that deserve a fair chance. And we're just trying to give those people that deserve a chance a fair shot at being a successful independent artist. I mean, I'm just now getting to that point myself. To where I'm just now very much so starting to see the glimpse of the glimpses of being a successful artist. Because now that I have the right connections, the right tools and the utilities to actually do the stuff I need to do, I can finally start doing that. But Eric does not know how to utilize those tools. And I've shown him, hey, this is how you can do it. This is what you can do. But every time I do, he throws it right back in my face and says, no, we're doing it this way. And, you know, and that's where he lacks maturity is in the business aspect of things. And like I said, it's nothing against him, like, on that level of, you know, as a friend. Like, the person, the personal level of a friend, but more or less the personal level of a CEO, of a partner, of a fellow music artist. That's the level of personal that I am leaving this on. He needs to learn to be more proficient in what he does. He needs to stop bouncing around every five seconds and changing his mind. And he needs to learn to separate his personal life from his business life. Like I said, I'm not ripping on him as a friend. That is not it at all. I highly respect him. I really did, but when he came at me today and did what he did, that's when he took it too far. Because I was the person that originally came up with the name Last Life Records. And then for him to attack me, thinking that he owns it, that's not good at all. Like, that's unfair. That's so like, dude, I'm the one that came up with the last life records name like you can sit there and claim you did all you want but in the end of it all at the end of the day i was the one that came up with that idea because for me last life records for me it means you know like hey we're giving these people a last chance a one last hope at making their dreams real But then Ian came up with the idea of us creating a new name. Like we decided on Bloodshot Records. And for me, what Bloodshot Records means isn't just, you know, a cool, crazy, out of this world name. But for me, Bloodshot Records represents, you know, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the time, the effort that we put into what we do. Because there are nights where my eyes will be just fucking bloodshot red from lack of sleep. 
because I put in so much effort, because I put in all that work. We want people to be able to see, to look at us and say, hey, look at how much effort and, you know, time these guys are putting in. That's what we want Bloodshot Records to stand for, is to show people, hey, this is us. This is our staple. This is what we are doing. This is the time and effort we take out of our day to create good music to help you guys. And I know it's going to be a long road, but in the end, I know it'll be very, very much worth it. But with that being said, guys, I hope this guys give you a little bit of closure on, you know, what's going on and why I had to do what I unfortunately had to do. Uh, for those of you that do, you know, hate what I had to say, I'm sorry you feel like that. But I hope that, you know, seeing this kind of makes you understand and helps you see why I did what I had to do. But with that being said, guys, there's a chance. And I will be posting up stuff about Bloodshot Records here within the next few days or so. So be on the lookout for that. But with that being said, guys, I got to get back to working on stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next live stream, man. And thank you to everybody who has been watching. I hope you guys have a safe and Merry Christmas. And definitely Merry Christmas to everybody who watched this and viewed this. You guys rock. But with that being said, guys, this chance, I'm out of here. Have a Merry fucking Christmas. You guys rock. And I'll see you guys next time, man. Peace.